In this video, I will demonstrate how to use FurComp2 to DS vocals. I will also clear up some common misconceptions about vocal DSing, in particular why you should not use split band DSing on vocals, but should always use wide band DSing. I've got this Ableton Live project open and I've recorded myself playing two tongue twisters. These are completely dry recordings with no effects on whatsoever, although the voice that you hear now giving you this narration obviously does have effects on. Hopefully this won't be too confusing. This is the top track here. These other tracks are actually muted, so we're not listening to them. Here's the first tongue twister about seashells. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Okay, so that was the first one. And this is the second tongue twister about baking. Betty bought some butter, but said she, the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my bitter batter better. So the first and most important thing to realize about vocal de is that vowels and consonants hardly overlap with each other at all. When I talk about consonants, I'm mostly talking about noise-based consonants. So I'm not talking about, say, the letter M, for example, because that doesn't really have any noise in it. But I'm talking about things like S, SH, C, T, K, G, etc. So I've split these tongue twisters into their vowels and noise consonant components by cutting up the region into smaller pieces. So let's listen to the seashells vowels. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. And the cuts aren't completely perfect, but there's very little overlap. So let's now listen to the noise consonants from that seashells tongue twister. She sells seashells on the seashore. And together we get everything. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So you get the idea. Let's listen to the vowels from the baking tongue twister. Betty bought some butter, but said she, the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my bitter batter better. And here's the noise consonants. And let's put these together. Betty bought some butter, but said she, the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. So yeah, if you've spent a long time editing video of peep or audio of people talking, you'll know that it's quite easy to tell noise versus vowels apart because the vowel, for example, this one has a repeating pattern and the noise is not very repetitive. It's quite random. I mean, there might be some harmonics in there, but it's kind of looks a lot different to but. We've got a T here, so you can see that the T is completely separate to the vowel. So this is the really important thing to understand. This is how it works. This is why you want something that turns down the volume when these things happen, but does not change the tone of them at all. This is why you want wide band and not split band for vocal de -essing. So in summary, when controlling the volume of S's and other noise-based consonants, we do not want to change the tone of them. For example, we don't want to change an S into an SH. We simply want to turn the volume down when they happen. So we can use a compressor for this. And I'm going to minimize these tracks because now we've split it all up. We don't need to look at that again. That's just for demonstration. We're going to work on the track that has everything together. How do we get our compressor to turn the volume down when S's or other noise-based consonants happen? Well, we use a wide band compressor that all it does is turns down the volume of everything up and down at the same time. But we put a high pass filter in the side chain. A high pass filter lets high frequencies pass, but does not let low frequencies pass. But this doesn't apply to what you hear. This applies to what the compressor responds to. So when there's a lot of high frequency content, the compressor will turn down the volume of everything. And when there is not a lot of high frequency content, the compressor should do nothing. So here we have FURCOM2. I'm going to set the high pass filter 
to 7 kilohertz. And this is from experience. S's and other noise-based consonants are the loudest kind of around about 5 kilohertz. Some go as low as 2, some go much higher, but we're not looking for where the noise is the loudest. We're looking for where the difference between the noise and the vowel sound is the biggest difference. The biggest difference in volume between consonants and vowels. And in my experience, this tends to be slightly higher than where the consonants are actually loudest. So for everything, I'm just going to put it on 7 kilohertz and I'm not going to think about it. Then we're going to pick a ratio. We're going to pick a very high ratio of 10. Put it at 10 because that's quite a common one that should be available. Knee of zero, attack of zero samples, the fastest release possible. And then this should hopefully do the job. So I'm going to put this on a loop. And let's just have a listen. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Because this vocal track has no effects on it whatsoever, the levels are a little bit inconsistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the de-essing and I'm going to put in another fur comp too. And we're just going to do some vocal compression. So for vocal compression, I'm going to set the sidechain high pass filter to 200 hertz, ratio to 10, knee to quite large, attack to zero samples, release to 50 samples. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to turn on look ahead because we're using a zero attack time just so there's no distortion. The reason for the 200 hertz high pass filter is so that the compressor responds in a similar way to how the human ear perceives loudness. We don't want it to over respond to low frequencies. So let's do the compression. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So we're compressing this quite a lot, but this is going to give us very consistent levels. So now let's recalibrate the de -esser. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And let's listen to the delta. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashells. So because we're giving it much more consistent levels, it makes it much easier to differentiate between the vowels and the consonants because we're feeding, we've got the compressor first, then the de and I feel this is the easiest way to do it. So this is with compression and de -essing. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And this is without de -essing. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So we've got the de -essing on. The de -essing can have a psychoacoustic effect of making it sound like the vocals have lost some brightness. And they actually haven't because we're not really changing the tone of anything it's just that we've brought down the volume of the S's. So if we want it to sound a bit brighter, we now actually can do this because the high frequencies are very controlled now. So we could do a bit of a high frequency boost if we wanted. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And if she Obviously, that's a bit extreme, but something a bit more gentle. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. And if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. So that was with the de -essing on, if we bypass the de -essing. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. That's quite annoying. The de -essing back on again. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. Okay, and let's try this on our other tongue twister and see if the same settings sound all right. Betty bought some butter, but, said she, the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my bitter batter better. So that's with the de on. Let's bypass it. Betty bought some butter, but, said she, the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my bitter batter better. That was with it off. Again, quite annoying. Put it back on again. Betty bought some butter, but, said she, the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my bitter batter better. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope that this video has been useful in helping to understand how vocal de-essing can work well.